Here we have a particularly vague level of response exam question from the OCRA A level in chemistry. And this is from the depth in chemistry exam paper. And what we're looking at here is the module three topic of rate of reaction. And so here we're looking at how we would assemble a continuous monitoring practical and how we would analyze the results from this to determine the rate of reaction. We've even been asked to demonstrate how we would process the results graphically. Now, for this particular question, I did find it quite vague because how you need to include your calculation in your answer isn't obvious when you first read through the uh, instructions of the question. A student was asked to carry out an experiment to determine the initial rate of reaction of zinc and hydrochloric acid, and the student plans to collect a total of about 72 centimetres cubed of hydrogen at room temperature and pressure in this 100 centimetre cubed gas syringe just here, and they're going to use an excess of zinc reacting in this conical flask down there. We're also told that they use a 100 centimetre cube measuring cylinder, which hasn't been shown in the apparatus, a stop clock and a two decimal place balance that's also not been demonstrated in this little setup just here. All we've got is the uh, conical flask, the delivery tube, and then the uh, scale of working here has been included on the 100 centimetre cubed gas syringe. Now, what's not also been included for this particular reaction, but you do need to be aware of, is the reaction equation here between zinc and the HCl to make zinc chloride and some hydrogen. So this is closely associated to a lot of your acid chemistry that you study as part of your A-level. You are aware that when an acid and a metal react, you are going to make a salt and hydrogen gas. And you are also aware that zinc only forms two plus ions. So the formula of the zinc chloride had to be ZnCl2. So what I'm going to do, as you can see at the bottom just here, is I'm going to take you through my response here in three different parts. We're going to have a look at the method for the experiment. We're going to look at some calculations because we have been told to show all the working in our calculations. So there's got to be some calculations involved. And then following the final instruction for this question, I'm going to describe how I would process my results graphically. So first off for my method, I'm going to weigh out the zinc mass using a two decimal place balance. And I'm going to go into the details of the mass for that shortly. But right now I'm concentrating on just giving a general descriptor with some finer details of how I would conduct this procedure. I'm going to measure out the volume of the HCl using the measuring cylinder that I've been provided with. Now, notice it is a 100 centimeter cubed measuring cylinder, so that does put a limit on things when we get to the calculation a little later on. So I will come back to that. I'm going to mix the reagents in the conical flask just here and start the timer at the same time. I then record the volume of gas collected at regular time intervals. Now that's a bit of a stock phrase, if I'm honest, regular time intervals. But if you did want to suggest a regular time interval, which is realistically going to be something um, that you are more likely to do in the exam, unless you have a flashcard that says regular time intervals on it, I would say every 20 seconds is realistic. Every 20 seconds or every 30 seconds would be realistic. Every five or 10 seconds is unrealistic because you're not able to read the kit and actually record the value with enough time to then get back for your next reading. So I'd say every 20 seconds is a realistic, uh, regular opportunity to go for. Moving on to the calculation, and the question is really vague at this point because what it wants us to do is not only suggest a mass of zinc that should be used here, so we're going to figure out the minimum mass of zinc that would be required, and since they want an excess, we would then know to go above this mass value as an absolute minimum in order to ensure that excess. They also want you to suggest a concentration and volume for the uh, HCl. And you've got to be mindful that you've been provided with a 100 centimeter cubed measuring cylinder. So you want to make sure that what you're suggesting is suitable to be measured out in that apparatus and then added to that conical flask. So when we go back to the start of the question, you'll notice that you did need to be aware of this reaction equation just here. So you need to be aware of the ratio between the zinc and the hydrogen here as one to one and the HCl and the hydrogen here, which is two to one. So I'm gonna be mindful of that when I do my calculations just here. First off then, my number of moles of hydrogen being collected can be calculated using volume over 24,000, since this is taking place at room temperature and pressure. We were told that by the question. And that gives me a mole value of three times 10 to the power of minus three, which is this value just here. Now the minimum mass of zinc required here, and I'm gonna use that one to one ratio between the zinc and the hydrogen to do this, is going to be the mole value, which is therefore presumed to be the same for the zinc as it was for the hydrogen since they're one to one. The mole value multiplied by the AR value for zinc, so the molar mass of zinc, which is 65.4 uh, grams per mole, but I'm using AR here, so that's unitless. And so 
that gives me a mass value here of the zinc of 0 0.20 grams. I would therefore, if I wanted an excess, I would need to go above that value. So even 0 0.21 grams would provide me with an excess of zinc. Next up then, I'm going to look at my moles of HCl required because that's going to allow me to estimate a concentration and therefore volume of HCl that could be used in this procedure. Now, because of the two to one ratio in the reaction equation, I know that my number of moles of HCl that I'm going to need to get the estimated 72 centimeters cubed of hydrogen gas is going to need to be 0.006 mol. So six times 10 to the power of negative three. And since they don't give you any other information here other than the volume of the measuring cylinder used to measure out the HCl is 100 centimetres cubed, I've then got to go in with a sensible suggestion. Now, my sensible suggestion here would be to use something like 0.1 mole per decimetre cubed HCl because that would mean I need to use 60 centimetres cubed. And you can get to that quantity of concentration if you think of 0. sorry, as 60 centimetres cubed as a normal value and that's between... I'd say about 20 and 100 inside the measuring cylinder that you're being uh, provided with to measure out the HCl. And if I uh, look at my calculation there, remember moles equals concentration times volume. So concentration equals moles over volume. I could do the 0 0.006 divided by a suggested volume that would fit inside the measuring cylinder. So if I went with 0 0.006 divided by my volume of 60 over 1000, which would be uh, my 60 centimeters cubed estimation of using that volume for my HCl, then it does come out with a concentration suggestion of 0.1. So it's quite vague that it wants you to do this, but actually it does make, it does make sense once you have a look at the practicalities of my answer here. Finally here, I've got to describe how I would process the results graphically. And so I'm going to plot a volume time graph don't say you're going to plot a concentration time graph because that's not the data you're recording you're going to plot a volume time graph you're going to uh, put a tangent to time equals zero because that's how we're going to find the initial rate of reaction we're then going to find the gradient of that tangent which is the change in y divided by the change in x and the gradient is going to be equal to that initial rate Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference, but before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below, so make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.